Well, I want to just do a back-to-back -back comparison of the old SensoNet app compared to the MyValent app. Um, I'm due the upgrade uh, in the coming few days, so I just want to show what the differences are. So when you jump into the original Senso app that you'll be used to, this is what you'll be uh, shown, something familiar like this your your setup might be slightly bit different but essentially you've got heating zones and then your domestic hot water and my circulation pump is for my heating zone so uh, i'm never quite sure why that's shown as different but sometimes that information is helpful so for me right now you can see up the top there zone one left hand figure it's showing me the humidity um, by that controller Sensor comfort controller right hand figure is the interior internal room temperature at the moment and because I'm on my setback I've got that down at 17 degrees so the house still is above where it's targeting at the moment but because I have it on full weather compensation it's not really paying any attention that it's 17.6 degrees inside so it will just keep uh, keep sending the uh, hot water around my radiators as needed and as per the weather compensation curve so you can go into settings and then you can set individual programs so you can see our weekend schedule is a little bit different compared to our Monday to Friday you can change your setback um, and then you can see that we have our set at 20 degrees and occasionally we might bump out to 21 degrees but we're comfortable at those temperatures so if I then go and you can obviously change into manual mode or off but leaving it on auto basically means it's on the time program I don't think auto is necessarily the most helpful or intuitive way but it works okay so let's go back from the zone domestic hot water again auto basically means it's on a timer manual means it will always be keeping the the tank heated up uh, depending on what settings you put in your sensor comfort controller and then turn your hot water off so for us again we have timer set from nine oh ten past nine okay i thought we had it set let's get that changed i've been uh i falsely thought it was nine o'clock to ten thirty so i'm just going to copy that down 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 get it working 10 minutes earlier and the reason i do that is because if you hang on what just happened there let's put it to 9 10 again nine o'clock complete complete copy What am I doing wrong here? You're probably spotting it as you're watching the video. Let's apply that. Complete. Okay, so the reason I do that is because if you look at our timer for our heating zones, it turns off at nine o'clock. So the heat pump can switch the valve straight away and it's already up and running and it will have to raise the flow temperature obviously for heating the water, but it's not starting from completely dead. Like if you were to set it to the middle of the night or perhaps the middle of the day it's already up and running so I've been toying with it and that does appear to be giving me slightly better efficiency working that way okay what else have we got on here click on the information tab so go from the left hand control tab onto the information tab you can see that this is incredibly slow to update our hot water cylinder after a couple of showers is saying 18 degrees don't pay any attention to the temperature at all the probe is about a third of the way up so the cold water comes in the bottom cools down where the pocket is for the temperature probe and there's still half a tank of you know 45 50 degree water above it and uh, the this display means virtually nothing our flow temperature is the current temperature of what is flowing around our radiators and the heat pump will modulate that based on the temperature outside and the room air humidity we saw that on the other page as well so then going down this will show us both the consumption the left hand top left hand one is electrical consumption for cooling doesn't apply to me the top right hand one is electrical consumption for domestic hot water um i'm not sure why that has why the hot water has come on today interesting it shouldn't have done that 
I'm going to have to go and check my settings. Okay, electrical consumption for heating. And you can see so far today we're at five kilowatts. I can hit this green arrow. I can go back to all the days and see exactly how much I used. 38.9 kilowatt hours. That was a frosty day. I can then select weekly. I can select monthly. I can select annually. Okay, and you can basically do the same thing for the yield as well. The yield figure is not the total yield from the heat pump. It's not the energy that has been pumped into the house. The yield is the energy that has been collected from the outside air by the heat pump. And so you'll have to, if you want to uh, combine this, you'll have to combine both the yield and the electrical heating consumption, um, electric consumption for the heating and once you combine both that figures that's how much heat you're putting into the house so uh, I hope that gives you a quick overview there's some general other settings that for me don't um, don't really apply and uh, once you've set it up you'll probably never look at those again but um, I am uh, consistently looking at the information page trying to tweak and monitor as I go to get the most efficiency and of course um, the control page to go and tweak some of those settings. It's a lot easier to set up your schedules on here uh, rather than using the sensor comfort controller um, but there's a lot of settings in the sensor comfort controller that you can't access through this sensor net app. So I hope that gives you a good overview and I will give you a contrast review when I get the Valent app. Well, this is it. The new My Valent app has arrived with me. So I want to briefly go over some of the differences and contrast them. Uh, this is just my second full day with it. So it's two and a half days in, so I'm still learning. But you can see straight away as you load the page up it tells you what your current temperature is 18.3 and the 20 degrees is the target temp so for us it's just clocked over um, onto off of our setback so it was on the setback so it's going to slowly build its way up to 20 degrees there's a few things that i've noticed are better about it straight away it's a little bit more responsive even though i have to say it is not buttery smooth but you know it it does a better job than the old sensor app anyway so you can set the duration there if i hit the three buttons in the middle you can say see activate hot water boost or activate away mode but again you'll see everything's still a little little bit laggy and i'm on quite a decent phone nothing else lags on this phone so it's not a phone issue if i press on the info button it gives me the usual warning about yields and everything else um, one of the things that a lot of people like, um, I'm not really that fast, it shows there my COP is 4.5, um, that's the energy efficiency bit that says 4.5 obviously and then it can show you how it's calculated. So we've got the 13.7 uh, kilowatt hours of electric energy consumption, this is just the past two days and then 50 kilowatt hours that's come from the environment and brings that up to a total of 62.5. Clearly this app can't do any maths because 13.7 plus 50 is not 62.5. Um, so where it's getting this uh, figure and this calculation from, I'm still a little bit unsure. If you know out there in YouTube world, then please let me know. But um, anyway, up the top here, shows us uh, so that's i'm clicking on system view it shows domestic hot water temperature in the tank currently 18.5 and actual flow temperature for heating circuit is 34 degrees uh, arotherm plus ah don't look at my serial number um, i'll cut that out later and shows the cycles and shows how low my cycle is so we can flick between day and week and month and year and oh we didn't have domestic hot water on so showing interesting domestic hot water okay domestic hot water for the week is showing a cop of 3.5 but uh, it doesn't bring down the overall cop so the heating cop is 4.5 the 
cold water is sorry the hot water <laughs> it's a bit cold at the moment it's 3.5 combined is 4.4 and you can obviously go in and set dates at the moment it still hasn't brought in my still hasn't brought in my previous data so it says it can take up to 48 hours but um yeah i don't know we'll see oh historical data from your previous app will be added within the next few weeks so I guess we'll get there eventually and it has a little download button at the bottom at the top of that so you could download your data right so that's where we're at um, settings you probably won't need to mess with this too much but you can change your uh, setback temperature in it your default manual and change your weekly planner which I went through in the other app um, and up here it shows you can see I'm on I'm glad it says time controlled instead of auto the old one on auto it just wasn't clear you know I think this is a better way of doing it but anyway um, that kind of gives you an idea oh dear I'm gonna have to block that out as well <laughs> I don't want to go on that outdoor temperature 7.3 and the air humidity is currently 60 degrees or 59 degree 50 percent I don't know what I'm saying um, I hope that gives you a bit of a comparison. For those of you who are waiting for the MyValent app, I don't think it's a big upgrade. I don't think it's a big deal. The Senso app never crashed on me. I know some people said it it was a bit buggy and crashy. It was slow to refresh the data. But apart from that, actually, there's there's no big difference. And so I don't see what the big deal is. Obviously, the MyValent app looks more modern, looks a bit more, you know, up to date and fresh. But apart from that, I mean, you really you're getting pretty much the same functionality, and so is there's no big deal. If you think differently or there's something that I'm missing, then sure, just let me know, and um, maybe we can all learn together.